What is going on, ninjas? We're gonna go ahead and mow my yard. I'm uh, not sure if I'm gonna get to the weed eating just because of the daylight. And if I don't, I'll do it tomorrow because tomorrow's Sunday and we're off anyway. So, <clears throat> but if I do get to it, then I'll do it. But I will show you a little bit as I'm just mowing the back and the front. Um, we were supposed to work this morning. Actually, we were supposed to work yesterday too. And we knew some rain was coming in yesterday. I guess I can put those on when I start mowing. And we were supposed to get some rain and we did get some during the night. So I had told Sassy uh, for Friday, I said, hey, don't worry about a specific time in the morning. I said, when I wake up, it'll be around 9, 10, 11. I'll text you and we may wanna, uh, you know, start late a little bit, but still have a decent day and get some stuff done. And he said, okay, that sounds good. And then I texted him around 1030 and he assumed we weren't working. So he already had some stuff going on and that's why we didn't work yesterday we were supposed to work today i had texted sassy this morning or last night and i said hey i'll see you in the morning uh i said 10 o'clock my house because i didn't plan on doing anything super early this morning as well and uh he said okay see you in see you in a.m and then 7 30 8 30 this morning he uh, cancels on me and says he has um uh personal stuff going on, I guess. So that's like two in a row back to back where uh, it didn't work out. So I'm not sure what's going on. I'll keep you posted on that because it's unusual for sure with the uh, Sassafras to just do that. Uh, Cause I really did have stuff lined up to do not only yesterday, but today too. That's where that stump was so when I had that excavator rented for the weekend I ended up pulling that stump out and I need to throw in some topsoil and throw some seed down but just haven't had a chance to yeah looks good looks good now keep in mind every time we change patterns if I stay this pattern for the next one or two cuts the stripes are gonna come in even better every time you change patterns at least in my experience uh, the new stripes will not come in as deep as they uh, the previous ones have so but after like two three cuts it'll <clears throat> it'll fill in nicely show you the hour meter 8.8 .8 hours so we have been using this thing <laughs> it is a uh, awesome machine every time i look at it i'm still in disbelief that this was gifted to me it's it's crazy We're done. Hope you guys enjoyed the little bit of mowing, front yard, backyard. But let's talk about employees. 
<laughs> Woo! Employees. What about employees, Nick? <laughs> okay, if you're in a position where you're thinking about hiring, if you're thinking about getting some help, getting my business is blowing up, okay? These are some of the things you can expect. <laughs> All right. Employees is a difficult subject. And I also think it's one of the hardest things in someone's business. Ever since I started hiring, by the way, you shouldn't be hiring anybody for the first couple of years unless for some reason you just blow up, right? You get some accounts that are crazy, then it makes sense. But I didn't at least. And I think I was in business five years, four years before I actually started to fully hire someone on, you know, bring them on board. And now I've had friends help me here and there, and of course I'd pay them. But then I got real busy and I was like, okay, I need to really make this legit and I need to start hiring some people, and I did. And here's the thing about hiring, what I have learned. The thing about hiring ninjas is, well, first of all, get comfortable. If you're hiring, get comfortable of firing. Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna hire quite a bit of people, and you're gonna fire quite a bit of people. And the reason for that, I think it's in any industry. Heck, I remember when I had a full-time job at a um, manufacturer when I was uh, working there for eight years. Yeah, eight years. You know, I, I seen people come and go all the time. Well, I didn't think nothing of it. Well, that's because I wasn't in the position to really care, right? I mean, I was focused on my job. <clears throat> but now looking back on it, man, they've been fighting with that and dealing with that stuff just like any other company. And now that I am a company myself, I am fighting and dealing with that as well. Now you guys have seen, that since I've started doing YouTube, quite a bit of people come and go. You've also seen now one employee who's hung around for about a year, uh, actually right over a year. <clears throat> and so, but before Sassy came around, you guys have seen a lot of guys come and go. A lot of guys who, didn't last but a couple of days, couple of weeks. Some guys lasted half a year. Some guys lasted a few months, whatever. A lot of times it's not because they're bad people or bad workers. It's sometimes they're bad people and sometimes they're bad workers. But a lot of times it's because people get comfortable and if you don't take charge of your business, and you get too comfortable with your employees, and your employees get too comfortable with you, before you know it, the authority is gonna feel like that they have over you or that you are not the owner, but a partner. And it's actually quite comical. Why does that happen? Because that's almost like happened with just about anyone that's worked for me for a decent period of time. I don't know, that's bizarre. You hire them on, and you explain to them what you expect and you want. You expect them to be on time, every time. You expect them to give you heads up when things are coming up. You expect them, if they need to call in, to properly call in. So if they can't make it to work. So a couple of things I bring up in my interviews, and this is a perfect topic because I'm literally in the process of interviewing, is if you're calling in, I need you to call me, not text me. If you're running late, I need you to call me, not text me. If you're uh, quitting, I mean, they can quit at any time, but preferably a week's notice, okay? So things like that, you set your rules. And if you get too comfortable and they get too comfortable, those rules tend to sway a little. And before you know it, they'll just feel like that they that you'll be okay with whatever they do, and you're not. So uh, you'll have people come and go for that. Then you got the slackers, of course, who start out pretty good and then they just go downhill. These are some of the things you can expect. You have to understand that they're human too, <laughs> as we all are. Well, I'd like to think so. But, and you know, that they have lives and things can happen and things can come up. I get it. But there's also that fine line of respect and this respect. Um, if they respect you, they know you run a business and they know 
that you depend on them. So they will properly call in. They will always be on time because they respect the position. Um, and if they don't, then they won't. <clears throat> but look, if you're in the process of getting ready to hire just like I am, good luck and hold your guns, stick to your guns, stick to your rules. Make sure you have rules. Do not just go based on, hey buddy, good to meet you. You know, how's it going? You Are oh, you looking for a job? Okay, cool, yeah, yeah, come on on board. Yeah, I'll pay you this much. No, have a handbook ready. Have something in written. Make sure they sign something where they understand the rules, okay? A lot of times I think people just part ways because there's a big misunderstanding from both sides, employer and employee. These are some of the things you can expect. Expect employees to be late. It can happen. Implement a rule about lateness, about anything. Have some kind of a strike system. Have something where if they do it more than, you know, once or twice, three times, termination, write-up, warning. Have something in place, okay? I'm not saying that's going to solve everything, but it will control a lot of it. Make sure you explain to the people that you're bringing on board what you expect out of them. How do you expect them to dress if you're providing shirts or hats or if you're not? Explain all that. That's why I always say have some kind of a booklet, like a policy book. It's really important. I know a lot of these comments are going to be like, me, 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 me. you freaking crazy. You don't change your background for cutting grass. Yeah. Yeah. Of course I am. Dude, my name is on the line. Is yours? No, it's not. You could care less. You could care less if my $10,000 mower blows up or gets stuck in a ditch or ruined. You could care less if my weed eater just drops dead because you dropped it. You could care less. It's really comical to me how some of these guys who comment on, on just a bunch of videos, not like one particular video, like, well, this guy's crazy, drug testing this and drug testing that, but what would these people, these exact same people say if I just ignored all that and I put someone on a $10,000 mower and they just absolutely demolished it? You know what those people would say? Well, you're an idiot for putting him on the mower. There you go. There's your answer. <laughs> so anyway. We'll see uh, if we're going to make one tomorrow or not. If so, stay tuned for Sneaky Sunday. But if we don't, then Pump Monday. All right? Thanks for watching. Take care. Peace.